Hello makers, welcome 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and today I have something very special for you guys, so stick around. Welcome back makers. So as you can see in front of me, I have lots and lots of 3D printed parts and I have lots of electronics as well. But most importantly, I have a Rubik's Cube. What am I gonna do with all these things you ask? Well, I'm going to build a robot that will solve Rubik's Cubes. So a few weeks ago, I came across an article on Twitter and that was regarding a 3D printed Rubik's Cube solving robot. And that instantly caught my attention. So what I did was I kind of held it in my pending inbox just to get back to it when I have some time. And recently I've been traveling a lot on work. So what I do is I kind of prepare prints on my SD card. Then I let my wife print away while I'm away. She'll remove prints, put some more on, remove those and so on and so forth. Now, seeing as this project carries with it about hundred plus hours of 3D printing time, I pre-sliced all the models. And while I was in Germany, I, um, I asked my wife to take care of it and have some printers running while printing these models. Another thing I wanted to do was kind of use two different printers. So for the blue parts, I used the TiVo Tornado. And for the silver parts, I used the CR10S, which is the updated version of the CR10. The idea was to see how well the two printers kind of intertwine together with parts having to fit perfectly well. Now, as you can see, you also need quite a few electronics. And to be completely honest, if you try to attempt this build, it won't be cheap because all of this cost me over $200 in electronics from Amazon. You need to get yourself eight servo motors. You need your power supply, quite a few screws and nuts. You need some cables. You need a camera. You'll also need a Pololu or Pololu or Pololu, depending on where you are. Finally, you need the Rubik's Cube. What I'm going to do now is assemble everything together as per the instructions on the Odvinta 3D site, which are the creators of this absolutely awesome robot. And then we're gonna jump onto the PC and start calibrating and programming all the electronics to make sure that it works perfectly fine. Now, prior to setting everything on the table, I did sort of run a few let's call them calibration tests where just to make sure that everything fits with everything. I did a bit of cleanup on the parts just to remove any elephant's feet that I had going on because everything has to fit perfectly um, together. So yeah, just, just, just to let you guys know. So yeah, it wasn't perfect right off the bat, but it didn't require much of cleaning up. So without further ado, let's get to it.
And here you have it, the 3D printed Rubik's Cube solving robot. It is insanely awesome and I am so happy that it has worked out. Everything fit perfectly, everything worked. It took a while to get there because it's been two days since I recorded the video where I started putting it together. And that is the reason why I didn't put up any videos because I had the desk covered and stuff and I didn't want to move anything. And this is the only space I have to record. So I had to work solely on this. Putting everything together wasn't complicated at all. The instructions on the Adventa side, who are the creators of this awesome machine, um, I spelled it out very clearly, so it was very easy to follow. I think it took me about two hours to put it all together. However, the calibration was a whole different story. It was a bit complicated. There were a few things which are which were unclear and some missing steps. I ended up doing quite a bit of research because I didn't even know how the polarity of the power supply would have to um, would have to go on the Pololo, or in which way or which pins to use. So. It took me quite some time, but I've learned a lot even when calibrating the servos or how to move them and how to set thresholds. And I can see myself doing many more projects like this, even something that custom of mine, which I've had in my mind for quite some time. Now, I do have to point out that you do have to uh, send an email to Adventa so they can send you a 30 day free trial registration key so you can run the Adventa free for 30 days. After 30 days, you can decide to purchase it. Personally, I purchased it straight away because I think they did an absolutely incredible job with this machine and I really felt that they deserve the money. So once you install the software, then the calibration starts. You enter the calibration numbers, which you got from the Palolu, the Maestro software, which controls the servo, and it starts calibrating. And the way it works is you have a camera at the back which takes two photos of each side of the Rubik's Cube in order to determine the colors, which positions they are in. So then it can create an algorithm which usually takes about 50 moves so it can solve the Rubik's Cube puzzle. Now, unfortunately, in the beginning, I had quite a few issues. First was the fact that I had the servos which weren't in sync when two arms were turning at the same time it wasn't in sync. So I was left with the middle section of the Rubik's Cube kind of in a diagonal position. So it was almost wrecking everything. That took me a while to solve because I had to go online, I had to do a bit of research, and then I started doing manual accelerations for the servo and that fixed the problem. Next up was the camera could not recognize the colors properly. And that is due to the fact that not every camera is the same and also the lighting environment. So while the Adventus software actually has a debugging system where it, you can upload your photos that it takes, the camera takes, and it gives you a PDF file to tell you what the camera is seeing, it doesn't exactly explain what you need to do to calibrate the hue and saturation of the colors. So after a few hours, I kind of managed to figure it out. I entered the numbers and it worked perfectly the first try. Now, if any of you guys do intend to put this together, I have recorded the whole process. It's a lengthy process, but I have recorded everything. So if I get maybe enough requests, I'd be more than happy to do an episode on exactly how to calibrate this machine. But in the meantime, if you are putting this together and you need any help, please let me know in the comment section below. I would be more than happy to reply to you. Word of advice though, that this is not cheap to put together. I bought the electronics myself. They weren't sponsored. And the electronics cost me around $200. So it's absolutely not cheap. You can buy 3D printers nowadays for that money. And the filament was generously sponsored by Filamentive, who produce amazing recycled PLA, which you can see right here. Always keep that in mind that this is not going to be a cheap project. It, it will run you a couple of hundred dollars, but I have to say that the result is incredibly rewarding and the machine looks absolutely amazing. And I've had every person that came into the house in the past two days just commenting and being in awe at what you can do with some electronics in a 3D printer. So that is it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. This has been an absolute blast for me. I had, I enjoyed this project so, so much. It was frustrating at times, but it was so worth it in the end to have a fully working, well, robot. Thank you very much for watching. You guys watching these episodes um, helps me continue doing what I love. I want to thank my absolutely awesome Patreon whose generous donations 
help me purchase stuff like this in order to create projects and show you guys. Last but not least, I wanna thank my sponsors, Fulamentive, for supplying me with uh, any RPLA that I need for projects like this, and they're always happy to do them. So please make sure you check them out in the video description below. Remember, there are discount codes. However, if you do send them empty spools, you do get yourself a 20% off your next purchase. That is it for me, guys. I will leave links in the video description to absolutely everything I used on this build, including the links for the Odvinta site. Make sure you check them out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Please share, subscribe, and as always, happy making, guys.